Thank you for joining us in this little elective. Like, we appreciate it because we know it's a busy, hectic time. You're probably a little bit brain dead, but it's all right. We'll see if we can't mash it a little bit more. Yeah, let's yeah. mash it up. <laughs> for the guys who don't know me, I know I had, like, five minutes on stage this morning to explain everything, but my name's Jules. I'm Australian. I, uh, I work in salons like you guys. I do a lot of education. So I guess before COVID, I was probably doing 100 and, uh, anywhere between 180 and 260 days on the road every year. And I travel all over the world and I teach cutting. Now, there's this one guy in the room that kind of changed the way I thought about cutting. And it was about maybe six or seven years ago and he came in, his name is Peter. And he came in and he showed me pretty much what my tools actually did and spoke to me about tools and scissors and made me understand them a whole lot more. And because I cut, you know, six days a week, and I do this for a living, thank you so much. Uh, I don't wear one of them, I'm it's not a, bit, a loser. It's a bit twisted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it doesn't fit over his guts. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. Everyone you're seeing today has a certain tool they use. A lot of us as stylists, we use different things like different size curlers and different size straighteners. We use different you know, sprays in hair. When we color hair, we use different bleaches and different consistencies and different powders and liquids. We have you know, a plethora of different reds we use to get a certain red that we need. But a lot of people just end up having the old one trusty scissor. And there's nothing wrong with that, but until you know what that does and where your limitations for, some of the things that you're doing in haircuts become really hard. And you go, well, Jules, you're, you're really good. I'm like, yeah, yeah, not really. Like, <laughs> sometimes it's based around the tools you use that make your job a little bit easier. So for me, as a hairdresser, and I think being at camp and listening to everyone speak about the way we love and we're so passionate about hair, when we're doing it day in, day out, if you get bored, you start fading away. Cool? You might fade into something different into hair. You might fade into sales. You might fade completely out of hair. But you normally do it because you get bored, because as hairdressers, we didn't do it for the money in the first place. We did it because we loved it. We wanted to you know, make people feel great about themselves. So I find that when you start having the right tools and using the right things, it makes it more fun. Just say you drove every day for a job, the better the car you had, the more excited you'd be about driving. Cool? So I guess when I got explained about why I have certain scissors or there's other things out there that I knew that maybe I didn't realise they were out there to do the jobs that I needed. Once I got them in my hands, it made it more fun again for me and I got a new life into cutting and definitely then in teaching. So now I find it really hard to teach people if they haven't got the kits with us. So in Australia, we do a lot of shows like this where we bring kits for everyone and we do classes and they use a kit so they can kind of play with new tools. Because we only brought 15 kits and there's 40 of you, we're going to try to do the same thing today. We're going to get Pete to kind of give the spiel that he gave me eight years ago. And we're going to try to get you guys all up into maybe groups of three or four. And we'll give you a couple of scissors and we want you to try it out. And it's going to be like a speed dating. So we'll go in, we'll have three or four minutes with a scissor. We'll ring the bell, you come back, we talk to you about the next scissor, then you go away and start dating again. Cool? At the end of the session, I guess it's depending if you fell in love, then come have a chat. And if you feel like it changed something that you're doing, and everyone's got a different style. Someone might be a bob master and love clean lines. Someone love, might love doing all the balayage and soft haircuts then let's work with a scissor like that. So we'll try to explain it. Pete's going to talk a little bit technical about what it does, how it does it, what to look for, and then I'll kind of talk you through how I'd use it on the floor when doing clients. So a lot of this is like preferential when we're talking about it as well. Like I spent the first 10 years of my hairdressing career with one scissor and one scissor only, not allowed to use anything else. And which is fine, but it's just a matter of, as hairdressers, you know, we're fucking smart people, yeah? We can make things work, we've got colours bouncing off haircuts, we're calm, we're paying attention to our client, but we're so just in tune to be able to adapt to our environment. And I think that happens with a scissor when you use one scissor. If it doesn't blunt cut, what do we do? We pull back with our hands, we use this action, we probably destroy our shoulder. So this way, there's not a matter of it's a wrong thing to do, this is just a different technique to do it. So come in here with a really open mind, try it, try things that you would do with your scissor normally and see what the reaction is to it, yeah? So the first thing I really want to go through is really quickly is blade edge angles. Who's ever heard of a, an all rounder? Or oh, a yeah. general purpose scissor? Yeah. Yeah. Can I tell you, it's a, it's a fucking unicorn. Because <laughs> it doesn't exist. Because you can't have an all round scissor. Because it doesn't do everything all round. What it does is it does some things okay. It does some things pretty shit. Some things good. 
You know, it's a jack of all trades, yet a master of none. So if I have something that's good for point cutting, how am I going to slice with it? And a lot of it boils down to every single scissor, that's a scissor when you're looking at it this way, yeah? And that's the angle. So when you've got a blunt cutting scissor, it's 50 degrees. When it's a slicer, it's around the 30 degrees. So how do you get one of those to do both? Between 50 and 30, what do you do? You whack it at 40 degrees and say it's an all-rounder. It just <laughs> me. Yeah. Boom, that's exactly yeah. how you make it. I'm an all-round runner, you know, because I can hardly run and I hardly walk. So yeah. I'm somewhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I stumble. <laughs> it's mostly <laughs> home from the bar, yeah. Yes, you can do everything with one scissor, sort of, but you probably won't always get the same results. But we're hairdressers, we're smart. So what we do is we work out little shortcuts and ways to do it. So for this little session, it's just a matter of just maybe opening up my mind a little bit to see what the different types of scissors are. Now, two edges on all our scissors. One is called a bevel edge. Any scissor, household scissor or shitty scissor has one of these. And it's got that thing here on it. That's a ledge, and that ledge actually just makes it cut blunt. The other one below it is called a clamshell edge. And when you're in America, we call that a convex edge, yeah? It's a smooth all the way to the edge. So whenever you look at a scissor, whether you buy from me, whether you buy from buddy, I don't care. You should always ask them the question, what's the edge and what's it designed for? So learn what your edges are, because every time I see a kit, there are six scissors and I have a look and every single one of them has the same edge on it. What are you going to do with that? So buy smart. I just turned 50 a couple of months ago. Did yeah? you? Happy birthday, yeah, I mate. I did. I did. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. Doesn't look it, does he? I feel little it. Bit. Looks a little bit. <laughs> um, and what I learnt was speed dating is pretty 50 year old, and um, and he changed it to something else called Tinder. Yeah. I'm gonna call it Scissor. That's, <laughs> that's a Tinder logo for those playing at home. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna quickly tell you a couple of scissors first. We're gonna start with the blunt cutters. So the first two cool. are going to be like the Stingray and the Marlin. Manta Ray. Uh, Manta Ray. It's all right, mate. It's my first time here. It's all right, mate. Quickly, I'm going to explain the Stingray. If you open and close the scissor normally, we're talking horizontal, vertical, yeah? As you close the blade, the angle between the two gets narrower. So what happens when you cut hair with something like that? As the angle narrows, it pushes the hair along. This little thing here, it's called a Stingray. Can you see the tiny little blade? Bigger blade. It's a bit How weird, simple. Pete. It's a bit weird, mate. How simple is that? It means that when you close it, the angle stays the same the whole way down. So what it does is it doesn't travel along with hair. It literally locks it in place. Anyone here run for a hobby? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no fools here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at the blade, it goes uphill, yeah? So when you start cutting from there, the hair has to work its way up a hill, so it slows it back down, giving enough time for the cutting blade or the active blade to come down on top of it and boom. So people, you normally would use a serration for this. But a serration is like getting a piece of sushi and using a bread knife on it. And it tears hair, especially over-processed. So this will actually give it the perfect straight line with pretty much minimal effort. So when I want to do this, I can literally put it in, pull the trigger, and I know every time, boom, 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 boom. It's clean. You can manipulate with it because it doesn't have a serration, so you can turn it around. So it cuts on rounds, you can do rounded bobs and little French bobs, it's great for graduation. But the trick with that is you've got to use your whole blade. So it's really great if you're doing, like I did a, a demo in Chicago two days ago and the ch chick had hair down to her waist and in the last five minutes of the class I talked her into a French bob and she said yes and I was like, okay, let's do it. And I used this but it meant that I could take larger sections. I went real wedgy and real Frenchy but it looked amazing, but it, I went through the haircut quite quick. So it's, again, something like, if you're lopping off haircuts and doing one length all day, amazing. You're like, you know when sometimes you need, you're doing shape and you need to go through and just carve out shape, great on curly hair, and you want that really nice blunt line, or really, really textured hair, you'll find that it cuts beautifully, like a clipper, almost, but without the push. Cool. Um, I've got a manta ray. So the manta ray, still a blunt cutter, but more precision. So a little bit smaller, a little bit skinnier. Now, has anyone ever used a, what do you call those things where you, those big things that you, chain cutter. No, a, bolt a, cutter. A bolt cutter. Anyone use a bolt anyone cutter? Anyone do home burglaries on the side, yeah? Yeah, anyone <laughs> sell bikes. So a bolt cutter and, as, and like maybe a, a hedge trimmer is made out of the same metal, but it's based on the design. The bolt cutter's got a really large handle and that large handle is powered by your hands. It's similar to your scissors, so your power comes from your hands. 
When the, the larger handle, it gives you more leverage to a smaller space. So it means that it gives it more power to the actual blade. So with this, you'll see that this handle, this little uh, bolt in the middle is actually pushed up ever so slightly and the actual handle is a lot larger. The blade is also a little bit skinnier. So when the blade's a bit bigger, it, ten it tends to suck up a lot more energy earlier at the base and fades away. Because this scissor is quite skinny and all same all the way up, it maintains the power all, all the way to the tip. So this is amazing if you like doing little grads, you like doing anything with layers and not nice and crispy, you come through, but it's more precise. So you can still use the tips with this, but it'll give you a really nice blunt effect as well. Okay, again, great for a one length haircut. These guys are a little bit stronger. The cool. feedback we had, I guess, from the, we brought this out first. So if you're doing graduation, doing it on the harder side, it's bigger and it's harder to get in there. So yeah. a lot of, Jules, a couple of people are like, ah, oh, can I have something smaller? And I'm like, really? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but it's actually true. Like, a lot of the time whenever we're developing stuff, it's because we get feedback from people like Jules that we can actually then go away and work with something different. So for this one, yeah, it's, it's super powerful. It's got great leverage and it's got two bevels on it. So it makes it really, really smashes it out the whole time. Yeah, totally. They're like brother and sister. Husband, wife, yeah. yeah. Brother, sister. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> In some cases, that's the same thing, yeah. <laughs> cousins. <laughs> kissing cousins, yeah. Kissing cousins. All right, the kissing cousins. <laughs> wow, okay, can you get out? <laughs> so whenever we're going to use these now, like literally they're... They're almost precision work. This is almost exterior perimeter sort of work when you do it. The one thing when you do use them, I always think about, you know when you have a haircut, the one side goes in and the other side kicks out? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, this is how the way your hair grows. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> a lot of the time it's what you're doing with this scissor. Because if you're cutting a straight line, that's a straight line, yeah? That's not a straight line. It's round. As you come around a corner, a lot of the time you tend to move your body shape when you cut in. Or you lean this way because you've got your ass on a stool when you do that. And so the hair will kick under. So once you actually know that with a scissor, you can actually cut blunt lines, which are great, but you can also then manipulate it slightly. If you want to kick the front out, you can slightly change how you work. Same with you doing fringes. You can literally come in with this and carve it around. You probably can't see this greatly from here, but... Whoa. And curve. Yeah. Like because it I doesn't have a serration, it, so you can just, boom, move it, maneuver it, maneuver it. That's my power trick. Yeah, I'm out of here. <laughs> That's all he's got. I've got a wall, I'm happy. <laughs> this is Pete's favourite little scissor. The it best is. thing about these as well, if you're cutting a bob with a scissor that pushes, so anyone who's cutting a bob and their scissor, you need to pull back to get a straight line. What happens is a lot of people who are right-handed uh, cutters, they would cut bobs like this. They travel all the way around. And what happens to your hair, it slightly does this. Same with your fringes. If you cut, like most people do, your little sweat fringes where you cut one side up, one side down, what happens is your fringe sits like this because your scissors push. So what you're finding in these scissors is that you're eliminating about 98% of that push into that scissor to actually cut it the same way. The same thing, I do a lot of teaching around directional cutting and I find it quite important when your scissors do push because if you want your fringe to sit up, you want to cut both sides up. If you want your bob to sit in the same way, you need to change the way you cut in directions. The best thing of these is it's a little bit more of an ergonomic setup. You've got like a nice little bevel around your thumb. So it means that you don't have to jam your thumb in. You can actually cut with your thumb barely in there as well. So it means you can get those angles when you're working in that direction. Cool? We're all gonna go and have a little play. There are mannequins at the back. I want you guys to break into probably teams of about five per head. We're gonna give you like maybe four minutes yep. to have a play. What? In our salon, our apprentices have to do their scissor over comb with these because it cuts everything really blunt so you know that if they're cutting holes, it's not softening it out as well. It's a bit of an arsehole thing to do, but it's fun, it's great. You know we're so used to always using just the tips? Go through, don't pull back, just work forward and you'll find that it cuts everything off nice and clean. Because these are quite large, to do any graduation, it's really hard to do a graduation with a whole blade, so you can still use the tips of your scissors with those, but they'll cut from all the way from the base to the tip. What did you think about it? Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Stingray's better than the Manta Ray. It's pretty crazy, the aggressiveness of it, but it's also soft. Like yeah, but it's nice how it grabs and you can feel it coming towards you rather than pushing away.
Awesome. All right, done. That's, that's our blunt cutters. Our next cap off the rank are our point cutters. So a lot of time we have an all, like we say we have an all-rounder, it looks a little bit like this. Pretty standard. I think everyone has one. It's the one scissor that most people have in their kit. When it comes to these point cutters, it changes a little bit. It talks about, if you haven't noticed there's a little bump in any of your scissors, anyone seen that little, we call it a mountain blade or a spine to the scissor? So it's very similar to the spine that we have. Without our spine, all our power is in our boots. When, that, when, you, when you load up anything, all the power sits at the, at the base of your scissor and fades away to the top. So anything like this, you can still use it for point cutting, but it's going to be softer and going to push away a lot more hair and a little bit stronger through the base. When you have a ridge, that power is just like your spine. A ridge, a spine, a mountain blade. It's like having a spine for us. It brings power to the tip. So what it does, it almost transfers that around and puts more power at the tip and less power at the boots. So with this, this is a point cutter because it throws a lot more strength to the top of your scissor. A lot of you guys might have something like this or one blade's like that and one blade's not, where it's like a little bit in between. Um, but that's kind of why. So if you ever see that on a scissor, that's what it's doing. And that's going to be a stronger point cutter than something like a more of an all-rounder. You will notice that like a lot of our scissors all have this ridge. So the three that we've got out today, they're just at slightly different points during it. So this one is slightly offset. So you get the power, but slightly softer with good detail. We've got like a Viper, which is the ridge is even more offset. So it's actually softer again. We never have just a generic plain one. They all have this. We have them in the range because some people just want them. But the idea is whenever I pick up hair is I want to look at exactly what it's doing. So if I do this with a single cut, you'll see how it pushes. But then look at that point here. That's the activation point on it. So what that means if I'm point cutting, if I point cut with a manta ray, what am I going to get? Aggressive, 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 aggressive the whole way along. If I point cut with this, softer, then cut, softer, cut, softer, cut. So I'm going to cut more C curvature out of it, but still get that aggressive tip on it. Every time I see someone in a salon and they start point cutting out a long layered haircut, I'm thinking that's pretty cool. Why are you doing that? Because you point cut like shallow, like say this, and it's super aggressive, yeah? I'm like, wow, why are you going to do that? Because then you come back out afterwards, you do the layers, and then what do you got? Oh, let's get a thinner or a texturizer out, and we're going to blend through that fucking mistake we just made. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's a matter of just changing that angle and being aware of, you know what, I need something soft and then grabby. So whenever we work, it's a little bit softer. I can still do my perimeters, but it's just softer. It collapses the section rather than it expands it. How'd that go, Jules? Yeah, it was pretty good. 80%. <laughs> 80%. Nice. <laughs> um, I think everyone likes having a point cutter. Everyone likes to have a little bit of shatteredness or a bit of texture into their haircuts. Blunt lines are a must, I think, but also the next best thing you'd probably be doing is doing a lot of point cutting to break up your haircuts. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Do you want to have a little go? So just a quick, the tiniest okay. recap on that one. If you had to have one scissor, yeah, out of the whole range, you'd probably choose the, this one because it's got the push and then it's got the activation. So push, activation. So if you need to cut a blunt line, you use the tip, yeah, and run it across. That's what you would start with in your kit and then you build from there, okay? So we saw that. We're going to move into a couple of scissors now. Probably a couple of them are a little bit reminiscent of us. One's a bit short and chubby. Perfect. And uh, the other one's a little bit longer. And you both have a big mouth. Yeah, yeah we both got a big mouth. <laughs> Correct. So when we actually do cutting with this, just quickly, if I try to cut exactly the same thing, I just... People are like, wow, that's a shit scissor. Yeah, that's yeah, a you're like, scissor. You know when you test a scissor out and you're like, let's see how good it cuts. Oh, no, I think this one's broken. <laughs> it doesn't do a straight line. So it's for everything that you don't want straight lines in. So have a little think about the way hairdressing's going, how texture's going, how we love seamless, how we love balayage. Well, this is like the perfect scissor. If you do a lot of balayage and you like ba balayage, how do you say it again? Balayage. Balayage, yeah. Balayage. We, we call it balayage. 
Um, by a laggy. <laughs> by a laggy. But as you're doing lots of that lived in type of stuff, I always find that there's no use doing a lived in colour and then doing a boxy ass haircut. Because you've got two things that aren't quite working with itself. A boxy ass. So, you know what I'm Yeah, I am. <laughs> so, when you're doing anything soft with your colour or your styling or that lived in a feel, you want to almost have a lived in feel for your scissor, for your cut as well. So, this is perfect if you've done a layer and you've found that, okay, I've done a layer, it's all, you know, quite structured, and you want to break things up a little bit. These are awesome to actually go back and, and like, almost break up your shape ever so slightly. So I hear a lot of like seamless layers and all this kind of stuff going on, but this is kind of what it does, I guess. When you're coming through the hair, because it pushes, just like a balayage where you don't want to see a straight line, it's going to do the same thing. When you come through, you can slice into hair and break up hair, especially a little bit deeper as well. I do this stuff a lot and everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? But what it does, it takes the weight out, but it creates movement and creates shape. So it's all this stuff that you start doing now internally into your haircuts that I think we always learn about structure out here. But a lot of people are too scared to cut internally because one, they think you're going to see it. Oh my God, it's going to grow out horribly. Where this is like a lived in colour, it's going to grow out beautifully. Cool. So this is a really cool way of creating shape to break up. You can go even stronger and heavier. But because it doesn't leave those straight lines in, it starts melting everything out. Again, you start working horizontal, it's going to give it more width. You work more vertical, it's going to give you more length. But all that detail comes through, and then you can build it up on itself. Brick these sections up. Now I find myself reaching to this pretty much on every long hair haircut, just to push in movement. A lot of us push movement in with styling. Remember the difference between styling, like heat styling and scissors, is that if you put the, scissors, you put the movement in with heat styling, it's temporary. If you go out and have a wild night, there's a pretty good chance that's going to drop or fall out. If you want to sit there long term, put it in with a scissor. So when I cut, I do a lot of like over direction. I put a lot of my styling in with my scissors. And this is kind of like one of those styling tools that I use. By using over direction, you're going to get swing, but it pushes it in as more of a permanent feel. Then style that and you've got a, like a double base on that as well. So it's going to give you more longevity in your styles. Did anyone notice when Jules was cutting then? It was actually, he was closing the blade. So it's a matter of trusting the blade. So for me, it's, it's not a slice in terms of you get the hair in and just run it down. You actually can close the blade because you've got that push. So you know that it's going to push, it's not going to create any lines. Yeah, it's, it is, it's so scary. You've got to trust that this is the right scissor in your hand. Make sure you've got the right scissor in your hand too, because um, it literally will do that push. So what it does is it's not like a razor, where a razor you are more shattering. Um, and you don't have those two blades. So it's a cleaner line, but it's getting that softer movement. I like it for separation as well. So if I wanted to break up an area and had a messy bob, like I could come in and load the hair in. And what I'm doing is getting separation. So as I come through this, I'm actually just going straight into the hair. And you think, okay, it's not really taking anything off. It's splitting the outer layer. But this blows me in mind every time. But when you take the hair out, you see the hair came out from the underneath, it comes from the thumb blade underneath, so it pushes the outer layer, hits the underneath. So if you want that messy look, you don't want layers in the hair because that changes the shape of it. You want it straight out, comes straight through, and it takes all the texture from the underneath and gives it that nice little separation through it. That's yeah. the big mouth marlin, that's us. So this is the winner. This is like if you do soft stuff in the salon, this is like almost a must, I would say. Cool? Cool. Anaconda quickly? Yep. All right, the other one we've got, which is a curly head scissor plus a slicer. We came up with this one because we've got heaps of curls going on at the minute. And what happens is people start slicing curls out and you just get just fairy floss on the ends of it. And it's just like, nah, you need to work a different way with it. This technically is a ridiculous scissor. Um, it's got a 45 degree edge on both sides at the bases of each. On my thumb blade here, this one, you know that one there? See that one? Blunt, completely blunt. Like it's 90 degrees, I've taken the whole edge off it. So make sure you get the right blade if you're trying this at home, yeah? But the other side is 30 degrees like the marlin. So what happens if I was to pick up and cut this, like a quick split on it, you get cut, and then push. So cut, push. So when you're working with this, if you wanted to create, and Jules will show you with the curls there, but you can also come into the hair cut and then you'll push it 
and it'll create strong lines on the ends, but then texture inside. I do a lot with these and I come through the ends as well. So anytime you wanna see a really nice crisp end to your curl, it's a great way of doing it with little to no um, tension on the ends, but it's nice because it slices it out, but it gives you that nice pinch on the end of your curl. I think a lot of the time when we cut curls, we leave them too blunt and they sit a little bit too freaky. So by doing anything like this coming through, it gives you that beautiful end to your curls as well. Again, I, I find these great for even slicing through hair, so very similar to a marlin, but I find they just pinch a little bit more in the end to give you that little bit of a crispier feel to the end of your curls. I'm gonna show you the last two scissors quickly because I know some, some of you want to drink wine. And then if you want to hang around and try them out, you can do that because it literally is like another five minutes here. Yeah, yep, cool. Um, texturizers or thinning scissors, I think. Teeth some sticks. people love them, some people hate them. They're great at getting rid of holes when you're doing your apprenticeship, when you're doing scissor over comb. <laughs> um, oh, this is probably the biggest learning I, found, I found on these. And I, I realized the day that Pete showed me this, everything that Pete does has two finger rests. Cool, or two tangs. Why? You can flip it. You can flip it. Bang, give the lady Reversal. a prize. What do you give her, Pete? I don't know. Scissor, give, you give her a scissor. Give yeah, her a I'll scissor, give her. Yeah, you know, I will. Okay, cool. Ah! Um, <laughs> so you can flip it. Why would you want to flip a scissor for? If you're left handed or right Oh, no, you don't. You just lost it. <laughs> Ready? No, but. What? Perfect. So you've got two blades here. One's an active cutting blade, which is your flat one. And one is like if you're foiling out and you're almost like taking out the weight out of it. It's going to siphon or sift through the hair and only take a portion of the hair. When these close as well, what you'll notice is it doesn't completely close all the way to the bottom. It pushes the hair down to about halfway. So only a part of that hair that's sifted through or, foil, or you know, foiled through is going to find its way into the blade as well. When this cuts, it means that if my hair sits in here and I come through and cut it, it's only going to cut on one side and not the other, which means it's very similar to if you were styling hair, can I borrow your mannequin? And you were styling the hair from the inside and you're trying to bend out hair, what will happen is if I cut from the, the flat line on the outside, so if I came through and cut the outside flat and the inside with my teeth, what it does, it gives me a little indentation. So very similar to me doing this. Cool. It means the hair is going to start wrapping around that flat blade. So when I got told that, it pretty much blew my mind and I was like, okay, that's going to change a lot. How can I put that into a technique? And I realised we're doing so many of these curtain fringes, but we're putting so much styling in to back our curtain fringes. So with this, I would come through then and go where I would style this. I would come through and I want to put a bend, say, here. I now would load up my scissor and put my flat line on the inside. And when this bends, it starts bending around that shape. And then I started getting this really great bend where it can build around your shape. So it's kind of like putting in like an internal guideline or a you know, third dimensional guideline into your haircut. So even if you have long hair, you can put a whole internal haircut without seeing it with a texturizer and it will build out. The other good thing about this is two rounded blades. Why do you think they're slightly rounded? What shape's the head? Cool, if I cut a line in my head, it doesn't leave corners. Cool, so it's going to round. It also can work with that wrapping appeal. You know, a lot of times you put your texturizers in, you close them and you try to pull and they don't work. It's because a lot of the time they're really square and flat. So it means that you can work around your head shapes and give you almost like that seamlessness to your texture. So by putting that in halfway, this is going to start giving me internals to push my hair around the head shape. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the better explanations I've heard. Okay, good. All right. I love I'm it. I'm going to sit over here now. <laughs> I think on the opposing side, the flat. Cool. So, on the opposing side, so I've just cut this from a flat line on the outside. So, this is when I change my scissor. <laughs> and I cut it that way. And that's why we have two tangs, because just like directional cutting, up, down, all the same direction, it's going to move differently. So if I cut the other side like this, this side's flick, this side's going to slightly flick over, maybe push down with weight. So when you have that, like when you saw the marlin before, we were going through this way and it's cutting the underneath, 
it's a little bit like just switching it around now for this. Mm -hmm. So this cutting blade, if it's closest to the scalp, it's cutting underneath. You would never do this on a paying client. And this mannequin doesn't have an Instagram account, so I'm about to destroy her life. <laughs> <laughs> cutting blade in and I can close and you don't see anything there. But if I was to turn that around the other way, So you can see what's happening on the outside oh, of it. Ruined That's your when, life. when you fuck that up, you only do it once, and literally it's like, mm. <laughs> you're putting gel in there, you're making sure you get that right. So it has a lead tip on it as well. So if you are working closer to the scalp, you can control and regulate the distance from the scalp. It's never closing in on it. It's um, like it gives yeah. that roundness again. So if you're point cutting, you can cut pretty much you know, you can go through and cut onto the scalp. So it's really great for like anyone, like men's short hair or women's short hair. It's really short that you can't get texture between your fingers, or you can't get any deeper than finger depth. It's good that you can go against the scalp and you're not gonna poke into them or any hard spots onto it as well. Um, when you work mid lengths to ends and we're slicing, we're coming through this way, cutting blade is on the bottom. So you know that it's working underneath the hair each time you're doing it. If you were then to come from ends, to, in, ends into mid lengths, You'll notice the blade is now the wrong way around. So that's where the switch comes in as well. Because then I can cut this way and knowing I'm working underneath, depending which way you want to work okay. the whole time. And that's, that's great because at the moment we've always liked our texture to be underneath. Now you're seeing a lot of this flicky stuff coming out. Change it around and it will flick out. Flick out heaps. So a lot of this, I don't know, Carol Brady type stuff where you're getting flicky ends or you're doing little pixie and mullets and you want this stuff to flick out, chuck it around the other way and make sure that your flat line's on top and it will flick up. Has anyone seen texturizers and they say, oh, this removes 5% of hair or 10% of hair or this one's 22% yeah. of hair? Yeah. Yeah. How many, how many percent is this one? Load, a load of shit. Um, yeah. I, I literally have gone and got hair wefts and I've weighed each of them out and I've put nearly every one of my texturizers into it. I have a scale I've cut once, pull through, and it is literally, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's not... I don't even know why people say it. They just literally make up numbers because they'd look at this one and go, oh, that's the removes 30% of the hair because it's so chunky. This one's going to remove 20% of the hair. No, it's, it's exactly like how you would foil or highlight. So you've taken one section here and you're going to foil really, really fine or really large. Most of the time it's the same amount of hair in there. It's just the placement of where you've used it and taken it. So don't believe that sort of stuff. It's more about the texture you create. The last little thing on this, the croc, it's probably the softest scissor in our range, despite it looking like the most aggressive. Awesome for scissor over comb, like cleaning up work, but also great for straight lines. So I can start at the base and work across on this one. And what happens is I get a straight line, but I get the softest, cleanest straight line in the world. Yeah, guys here, and you cut it and you get the koala barriers out the side because it sticks out, look like a freak. Yeah, <laughs> cut it with one of those. Literally, as it grows out, it grows out softer and rounder. It's a pretty, Cookie little scissors. And it also, if you're doing lots of pixies and you find that you do scissor to comb with the points of your scissors, similar thing with this. I might ruin yours, so mine looks good. Um, same kind of thing with this. If you were to take, oh, I want to take a side out, these are quite a nice scissor. <laughs> sorry, Pete. Don't be sorry. Look at you go. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it was going to be it was average gonna be and now I have an excuse for it. You start getting things like this, you can get softer shapes. But also, if you were then to go, she was like, I want it shorter, but I want it really, really soft. What was that? It took that right off. <laughs> This will give you this softest scissor over comb that you can get like that point cut scissor over comb kind of around the whole head. This is the croc. No, the croc. You were using the croc? Yeah. yeah. And because it cuts those straight lines, you can get this really soft texture on a really long haircut really fast. So you can go through a whole head shape. And you know sometimes you get that hair that just goes boing and it sticks straight out? As you're cutting... Like a mannequin head. Couple of things, <laughs> yeah, a yeah, couple of things that happen. Keep your flat line underneath. So when you're cutting, it's tucking under, tucking under, tucking under. By doing it this way, it's going to flick up, flick up, flick up. So by having the flat line underneath, it's going to tuck under, it's going to bring your shape in, but it's softening out. So when it brings it out, again, it's going to be a more of a lived in look. Again, longevity, as it grows out, it's all slightly different lengths. So it's not going to grow out like this and aggressive. It's going to grow out a lot softer and give you a lot more longevity to your haircut. Ever had a customer with an undercut you need to grow out? 
Yeah, yeah, that's like the pain, the painfulest thing in the world. Yeah, because what they do is they let you do it a couple of times and then they get so jack of it because they're trying to grow out something with a flap sitting over the top so it can sit flat, it grows out, it becomes a ski jump. So oh, what yeah. they do is they get their own clippers and before you know it, they're number one out, they have nothing left on there. Every time they grow it out, they're literally like in a mental asylum. If you were to soften it out with one of these, it literally grows out, you've got a client for life hmm. because you've just fixed their nightmare. Everyone's, you've got to take an oil, a chamois and a care and maintenance booklet. One thing we didn't talk about was actually looking after your tools. I promise you the scissor I've got here is 25 years old. And the reason why it's so good now is because I chamois it and I oil it every day. This thing is around chemicals, water, salt. The three worst enemies of steel. If you do that every day and keep the tension right, they're lifetime scissors, as long as you actually look after them. Thanks for coming along and enjoying. Yeah, thank you.